Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. There's a great opportunity that the Lord has granted us. And the purpose of granting us these days or is growth, increase, knowledge of Him and of us as well. We are his children and if this if he is a good father definitely he should have a good plan for his children but you see all that are called fathers they derive that name from god and that's how we can become fathers because we understand also the fatherhood of God. So the fatherhood of God has given birth to what a father is supposed to be. So a father is not a person that is uh, inventing or creating his own way of becoming one, but you should look at God as your father. And understanding the fatherhood of God, he will comprehend what it means to be a father. And by the way, many people are not acquainted with the motherhood of God. When you talk about mercy, you're talking about the womb of a woman, and God is a God of mercy. There's a connection there because you see, God is neither male or female, so He can be anything. That means that means um, He covers both of them, male and female. So, God is not just a man, you know, and He's not a woman, He's God as a spirit, as a spirit, but now. Uh, the good news is that he dwells in us and if he dwells in us we have the outer form that manifests God whether you're a woman or a man it makes no difference glory to God now this is amazing it's important to know how much God has been so gracious to us and the grace of God and how it works how it functions we read and we're still reading in Matthew chapter 8, verse 3. Then Jesus put out, put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be clenched. So we talked about this incident, this moment when Jesus Christ stretched out his hand. You know, when he put out his hand to say that I am willing, be clenched. So we had the voice of grace, that the willingness is there. God is always willing to, to cleanse you. Look, otherwise he wouldn't have come. He wouldn't have come. He has come. You see, the Bible teaches us that when he was about to be born, the angel appeared to Mary and said that you shall call his name, you shall call him Jesus. His name shall be Jesus. And he shall be called Jesus. And because that name meant that he will save his people. He will save his people. So, you see, when, if Jesus was born on the earth, when he was born here, he came to save. He came to save. Therefore, the will made him come on the earth. In the first place, he would have chosen not to come. But if he came, that is to show you that he was willing to save. And that's why he was there. He didn't come to waste time. He didn't come to judge people. He didn't come to um, stand by and do nothing. He didn't come to assist at what was going on on the earth. He didn't come to live an ordinary life like everybody. He came to save humanity so that humanity may be rescued from that fallen mind, fallen state into this marvelous light of his dear son. We have to understand then that the will of God is to save. So when this man was suffering, he said, if you will, he said, yeah, they stretched out his hand, put out his hand and touched him saying, I am willing to be cleansed. So we saw that he touched him. He touched him. And this was a divine touch. This was a divine touch. This special touch. You know, this is a special touch. It's a divine touch. This is different from any other touch you ever have in your life. 
this is a divine hand. When the divine touch, when you hear the, the divine touch, when you hear the word this divine touch, then you should understand that his touch is eternal. Now, what does it mean? It means it goes in the past and heals you from the past. It strengthens you in the present and sets you on course for the future. The touch of God is an eternal touch. It's not about what you did in the past. It's not about what is happening now. It's about how continuous this hand is going to produce results and change and transformation that you never knew in your life. The touch on the hand of God was stretched upon this man and this man could feel the healing power of God entering his innermost being, touching every part of his being, every soul, every mind, every cell of his blood, every bone of his body, everything was being touched. Glory to God. This is what, what was going on. Now look at verse, and that verse, he says, immediately, at the end of the verse, the verse 3, immediately his leprosy was cleansed. His leprosy was cleansed immediately. Immediately. <laughs> oh my goodness. When you study in the book of Leviticus, chapter 14, the entire chapter is dedicated on this matter. The idea of cleansing the leper. The whole chapter is talking about how the leper is supposed to be cleansed. If any, if at all, he claimed that he's no, he doesn't have lepers anymore. It was a long, long process. You study that entire chapter. You'll see the process from one thing to the other, from one examination to the other. It's like a priest was like a doctor. He had to do many, many examinations, a lot of examinations. Examine, he examined this, examined that, put his fingers in the blood and touch him, his ears, his eyes. He had to mix up things to bring forth that cleansing, the hyssop. He had to use the hyssop to cleanse that man. It was a long, long, long process. He had to wait for days. Even when he was found without leprosy, he had to come and stay out of his tent for seven other days. You know what it means to stay out of your camp? Uh, your tent. You, it's my God. So, if you look at that, you see all that process. Why? Because, and the reason why all these protocols in pre, in place is because they couldn't believe that someone can just be free from leprosy just like that. They couldn't be. They couldn't believe it. I mean, it, they couldn't conceive that it was a possibility for a man to be cleansed just like that. So they had to carry on, carry out examinations after examination, like a doctor, like you understand, like in any terminal disease or a certain disease that they have to examine today and after a, a week or two weeks or months, they will tell you, come back, let us check if you're still there. You know, that's how it works. That's how it works. So they had to examine this man over and over again to see whether he's what? He's healed again because leprosy was a very incurable disease. But then there was space. There was space provided that in case this man is free from his leprosy, then he should undergo all this process for the priest to declare him cleansed and free. Oh my God, you had to bring a dove, you had to bring some sacrifices, they had to, 
wave the incense. All these things were done just to ensure that the man is cleansed. You see the process it took? Now, that is why we just read a very powerful word. You see, because when you have an idea of what was going on, you can be shocked, of course, as well. But what we are seeing here, he says, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. It was not believed in the times of the Jews that the leprosy would be cleansed just one day. It would be like any other disease which will slowly by slowly vanish, but just like that, instantly, no, no way. They couldn't believe. They couldn't believe it. But this is what we are seeing here. The Bible says he was instantly clear. You see, what will take years, what will take process, what will take, you know, protocols, you know, when grace breaks forth, it has a need to wait that long. As a person is saying, I'm free, I am healed, I am forgiven, just like that, yes. That's the power of Christ. Instant healing, instant transformation, instant change. Yes. Yes. And Jesus understood that even if this man is free, the Pharisees do not believe. But again, Jesus in his heart, he wanted the Pharisees to ask to testify for themselves. Through this living testimony of a man who was a leper, now he's free just like that. To go back, and do you know that when they were to examine you, they had to examine you out of the, out of the city? You're not close to people, remember? They had to examine you out of the city because these people are staying out of the city. Nobody cared. What a miserable life these people went, were living. But you see, this is what Christ does. Glory to God. Instantly, instantly, the man was free, was healed. Just like that. And so Jesus knew that these people would not believe that it can just happen like that. He said, do you know what? Verse 4, and Jesus said to him, see that ye tell no one, but go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them, as a testimony to them. Now, normally, what was going on here, in the Old Testament, they had to do it so that they may ensure that a person is what? Is free. But then when Jesus cleansed this person instantly, he knew that now these Pharisees and these priests have to assist at a new thing that is happening in their time and age. That a man can be touched because he had to explain to them. They had to, they were to ask him what happened. They would say, he would tell them, Jesus touched me just like that. And they couldn't believe. And again, remember, he was not supposed to be touched by anybody. So he went to the Pharisees and said, now I'm free. I'm free. I mean, so that it may be a testimony to them. In the mind of Jesus, these people have to realize that the cleanser of leprosy has come. And he does it better. He does it better and he does it instantly. He had to mesmerize them. I'm telling you. <laughs> Glory to God. But that's what grace will do to you. And people will be amazed at what has happened to your life. Shalom, shalom.